Hello friends and fellow gamers, MKX Jump here, and this week we have a brand new event for Idle Heroes. It uses a card system to draw heroes and use them to fight bosses. So today I'm going to be showing you how to use this system to get the best rewards and how to use the fewest number of cards to make progress. Now as well, this event is giving a ton of fantastic rewards, and it seems for three events now in a row, DH Games have given us incredible rewards for free-to-play players, which has some spenders spending less because they already enjoy the free-to-play rewards, but also other spenders will probably end up spending more because they just want to get more and more and more of these items. So that's really exciting. As well, guys, this is going to change how we use contract story gems. A lot of the time, we use them to go in on galas, but this week we have a gala, and it's actually one of the least appealing parts of the event. So we're going to break all of that down today, but before we do, let me tell you about this week's sponsor. Angel Legion is a sci-fi idol RPG similar to Idol Heroes, but set in space. You put together a team of angels, combining their abilities into epic combos to explore the galaxy, defeat powerful foes, and when all that fighting is over, you can hang out with your heroes in the cabin to relax and unwind. The heroes in this game are fully customizable, and you can dress and change the way they look to your heart's content, and there's lots of different heroes in the game for you to experiment with to find which team you like the most for making progress. For this week only, Google Play users can get themselves access to 10 free summons and an exclusive fashion item that can only be picked up this week. To claim the fashion item, all you need to do is head into your account menu, click on the gift exchange button, and enter the code NWRY6148. Confirm that code and you can get yourself 10 free summons and a unique fashion item. Then all you need to do is head over to your heroes and select the hero you want to equip the new item to. Unlock it, equip it, and there you go. It's now available on your account. So folks, if you want to help out this channel, go ahead and download Angel Legion. It's completely free to play and should be available on all app stores for your devices. Angel Legion, give it a search, and who knows, it might be your new favorite gacha game. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out this incredible new event for Idle Heroes. So, every day for logging in this week, we are going to get seven enchanted cards, and these cards will be used for making progress in the main part of this week's event. So you're going to get 49 of these cards in total across the week, so make sure you log in every day. You are going to need these, and when you see the rewards, you're going to get very, very excited. So let's immediately just talk about last week's event real quick. We have the Jungle of Fantasy. Make sure you cash in your little jelly dudes, your little slimes. Make sure you grab the treasure train items. If you're free to play, you probably should have been able to get an orange chest. So already, right, free to play quality of life has improved because campaign loot drop has, Im like, the, the, the store is so much better now, right? They've halved the price of Starspawn stuff. You've got these orange treasures, so that's fantastic. But then you look at this week, let's take a look at the value packages to start. Well, first things first is you can, if you want to, use contract story gems to get some gems and as well enchanted cards. This may be important for some of you trying to eke out a little bit more progress because the rewards are really strong from the card clash of illusion and if you run out of contract story gems you can even use money for pushing ahead in this as well although in my opinion that may be a little too extreme next up we do have the card clash of illusion so let's quickly break down how this works so in the Card Clash of Illusion, we are going to fight bosses, and you have three teams available to draw cards and get heroes. The most important thing you want to do here is kill these bosses as quickly and efficiently as possible. And you can see below the boss, it will tell you the heroes that have a better chance of dealing damage to them, as well as the HP of the boss. So if I draw my first three cards here, I'll get my first team. And already I've pulled two drakes, which is a dark hero, meaning I've actually got quite a strong final damage bonus here for the boss. Also, because I completed a team, I was given a bonus down here, and that gives me plus 30% on whatever team I assign that bonus to. However, I'm not going to use that bonus just yet. I'm actually going to use three more of my cards just in case I get a better team. And if you look here, I didn't get a better team. I got a team equal to the first one because we have two transcendence heroes, which means I get a double bonus against this guy. 
as well because I have two darks in this team, I get a slight bonus for having double dark, and in this team I have two transcendences, which gets me a slight bonus for having two of the matching. So not only do I get a bonus for having two of the same, I get a bonus as well because the boss is weak to these particular heroes. Now I need to buy two more of these if I'm going to go ahead and draw our final team. So let's do that. We get dark, we get fortress, and we get shadow. Okay, that team's not as strong because I don't have an aura bonus. But what I do have here, I can turn the selected hero into a transcendence hero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this Olivia into a transcendence hero. That gets me a straight three of a kind bonus, as well as the fact that all these transcendence heroes have additional damage against the boss, making this easily the strongest team that I have. This ticket will turn heroes into Abyss. Now, there's no advantage to me doing this unless, of course, it's going to give me an aura bonus, which isn't very helpful because Abyss heroes don't do any extra damage against this boss. So what we'll do is we'll attack with both of these teams down here and we'll save our strongest team. The reason we're saving it is because we want to fill this team with as many buffs as we possibly can. Now, we need to get some more teams in here. So I'm going to go ahead and buy six more tickets using gems. And let's go ahead and draw some more people to help us fight. We have Abyss, we have Dark, and we have Forest. Ah, fantastic. We'll go ahead and turn this Olivia into an Abyss hero, and that's going to give me a faction advantage. Very nice. Let's draw again. We get ourselves Light, we get Dark, and we get Forest. Okay, if I turn this Michelle into a Forest hero, again, we're going to get a faction advantage. So let's go ahead and attack with these teams. The Dark Hero gets us a little bit of a bonus. And now you can see the boss has 83,000 HP left. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and draw another three cards. And that should be more heroes that we can use here. We get Light, we get Transcendent, and we get... Okay, that's Forest. This is quite a tricky one here because I could just go ahead and throw the Dark Hero on. I think that's actually our option here. So I'm going to put a dark hero where the Olivia is. That takes us to 34,000. I'll also enhance the power of our Transcendence team here. That takes us to 49, and that should be enough to kill this. Yeah, so if we attack, there you go, and it's left with 49, 100. That was absolutely perfect. And we beat the boss using the minimal amount of cards needed. One thing you might find is that the boss is left with, let's say, only 10,000 HP. One thing you can do is use just one card and draw a single person, and you could just immediately go in with that team as well. So do remember that you don't want to overfill these teams if you already have enough damage on the board. Another point is all your bonuses and all the cards that you summon are only usable in the current boss. After the boss has been defeated, all those cards and all those bonuses will disappear. So make sure to use what you have as optimally as possible so that you can clear these bosses as quickly as possible. Once you do that, you'll get a stage cleared. And for each stage you do clear, you'll get rewards. By the time you reach stage five, you get five glorious treasury coins. And then stage six is going to get you stellar shards. Stage seven gets you cause of transcendence and five more glorious treasury coins. All really, really good rewards here. So what I've heard from a lot of people is if you do this optimally, just by using gems, you can get 60 from here, and then you can use contract starry gems to get another 60. And that's only going to cost you 600 contract starry gems. So if you can use those contract starries and those regular gems, that's 6,000 gems, 600 contract starries, you can get to 127 of these cards on day one. And for a lot of people, that has been enough to complete stage seven, which means probably with what remains from the week ahead, you can probably get to stage nine free to play just by doing that strategy. And with that, you're going to get 15 glorious treasury coins. And you can see if we skip ahead to the glorious treasury, this is basically the same as what we had when Melissa was released. This is an incredible shop offering crystals of transcendence and stellar shards at this amazingly cheap discounted price. So with the 15 of these glorious treasures that you can pick up free to play, you can just have two and a half million stellar shards. And then that's going to be enough to unlock stage three, where you can then again at a discounted price pick 
pick up Sublimation or a Core Chest. This is ridiculously good for free-to-play players. If you need them, you can have 10 chests that each have 50 Master's Toolboxes in. So cool, 500 Master's Toolboxes if you needed it. And as well, if you want it to be really weird, there's Star Spawn Materials, although I don't think this is worth it because improving the bonuses to your heroes through things like Stellar Shards is just way better than chasing things like Star Spawns. Although here as well, you've, you've got resources. Not that you will be picking this up, I don't think that's worth it either at all, but it's just interesting that that's available. I think the best options are, if you need them, Master's Toolboxes, but for most people, it's almost always going to be Stellar Shards. Once you've spent twice and spent 10 Glorious Treasures, you can go ahead to Shop 3, and that's, as I said, where you can then pick up Sublimation, and that's just going to improve the power of your Transcendence Heroes. So this is really, really nice. Store 4 and Store 5 will need you to spend 60 Glorious Treasury Coins, which is a little bit more expensive, and even at the end, you can see these new items that are needed for once heroes have reached the max Destiny level. This is completely inaccessible for free-to-play players. In fact, there are many, many heavy spenders out there who don't have a Nirvana hero yet, so yeah, you don't have to worry about this end stuff. But really, guys, this is just an amazing way to pick up resources to improve your Transcendence heroes. I will love this so much. Also, if you wanted to, you could spend more contract story gems here, and you could even try to push to the stage 11. So stage 10 is going to get you 100 Master's Toolboxes, and stage 11 is going to get you 10 more Glorious Treasury Coins. So you can use that 10 for another bunch of Stellar Shards, and then you can get yourself Sublimation or a Core Chest on top of that. Again, something really, really good. As well, there's also a B- Resonance Crystal, which is a bit weird. It doesn't let you sell the hero you awaken with this, so if you high roll and get an A tier, you sadly can't sell them on the marketplace. I find that a little unfortunate, but I think this is DH Games' way of combating Starry Gem Farms. I, I I don't think it's that great, but hey, it's, it's something they've decided to add. It'll definitely calm down the auction house. And by making this event a thing and making it an incredibly good use of your contract story gems, because do remember, you can spend 600 contract story gems to pick up more of these cards, then yeah, you probably will be wanting you to use your contract story gems for this, especially if you're a free-to-play player, because your contract story gem income is going to be relatively slow. It's way better value than going after a Soul Awakening Gala, which is wild because Soul Awakening Galas have traditionally been one of the better things to go for, but then recently we've been seeing really good Good events which have people more inclined to go ahead and spend on starry gem packs and now that we have the new card clash of illusion these rewards are just so fantastic and in my opinion the best use of contract story gems for free to play players now whilst you're in the card clash of illusion there's also the challenge mode where you can go ahead and fight against this guy over here which is good fun and by fighting this, you're actually going to see how much damage you can do to this boss. And the person who ends up doing the most damage is going to get a nice pile of gems. You also get a little avatar with Sherlock's face on. Uh, it doesn't really matter. This is just a way of saying, hey, look, if you compete with this, you get some gems. And if you do very well, you get a lot of gems. It, it's not, it's not going to be something that people are going to be really annoyed they didn't get the top of the leaderboard for. Just think of this as another way that free-to-play players can get 1,000 gems for free. It's nice. Now, of course, we do have the Soul Awakening offers. I already said this was probably not worth using your contract story gems on, but if you were interested, you will get yourself points for every hero you awaken this week. So if, for example, you bought the Splendid Awakening card as late as possible, the Splendid Awakening card will last the entire week for you, which will be extremely potent and allow you to get a free awaken every single day. So those of you that managed to do that and took my advice when this was originally offered, then yeah, you guys are going to get some nice additional bonuses which will make it easier for you to do the Soul Awakening Gala. Now every time you awaken a hero, you'll get points, and those points will get you prizes. For the first few, you're just getting chests, but when you get to 100, you can gather a mysterious artifact selection chest. For 150, you have the option of going for spiritual essence, or maybe you can get some sublimation as well, which is quite helpful. This is 45,000 sublimation pieces. For 300 points, you can get a core chest, which has 50 shards, or you can get a sublimation chest, which is 90,000 sublimation materials. And also you can have 150,000 spiritual essence if you need it. And then finally, at the end, you can pick up some destiny materials. It's offering scattered spirit vein shards and divine power aurora gems. So if that's something you were interested in, it typically needs around 3,000 to 3,500 per 300 points you're going for. And that's going to be about 50 awakens for 300 points. Now, I know the Awakens are 100 each, so it's more like 5,000 Contract Story Gems, but if you consider that you retire those heroes that you do get for more Contract Story Gems in return, it only ends up being a net of about 3,500. What we also have to help with this, then, is the Contractual Strategy 
which is going to give you access to a lot of contract story gems if you've made progress in campaign. Considering most of us have beaten campaign, especially if you're not an early game player, um, then yeah, you're going to pick up contract story gems. And in fact, people can clear campaign without even needing a transcendence hero. If you're struggling against waves, try using ticks with the melodic strings and putting Ignis next to the ticks so that he does an active skill in round one and in round two. And if you're getting crowd controlled on your LOEs, put Ignis next to the LOEs so that she is able to be control immune. Either way, this is 600 contract story gems, which is conveniently the exact number you need for the card Clash of Illusion to buy those extra cards. It's perfect. DH Games know exactly what they're doing with this. They're making this as free to play friendly as possible so that you guys can really get the most out of this week. I'm really glad DH Games have done this. And on top of that, we have a Starlight Melody, which is giving you points for every enchanted card you consume. So considering if you spend 6,000 gems and those 600 contract story gems, you will have 169 enchanted cards. That's easily going to take you over 300 points. And if you do choose to awaken heroes, you'll have a decent number of extra points there. You get five points for each awakened hero. So if you get to 300 points and get 50, that's going to be another 250 points you get for this particular area of the game. And if you go and do 100 Awakens for the Gala, that's going to get you 500 points. So people should be able to get a lot of rewards here. Uh, it's mainly here for the Stellar Shards and Master's Toolboxes. They're going to be the most useful resources. Later game players may appreciate the Spiritual Essence for upgrading their heroes, because obviously trying to get heroes all the way up to Tree of Origin 5, especially level 120 now in the Tree of Origin, is a lot to ask for when it comes to your Spiritual Essence. There are people who, even with the Glory Challenge completed, are running out of spiritual essence so that's quite helpful um so yeah most people are probably only going to get about 300 points and that's just by going and doing the enchanted cards but even then you're going to get three lots of this 100 chest so that's 45 master's toolboxes there you're going to get one of these 200 chests that takes you to 60 and then you get a 300 one that's another 15 that's 75 75 master's toolboxes with some extra stellar shards and spiritual essence and also transcendence copy selection chests thrown in there is not a bad deal at all for bonus rewards and what's crazy as well is if you did want to spend there's a moonlight gift here which is also having multipliers which will improve the amount of points you do get from the starlight melody which will make it easier to pick these higher chests up such as this 1500 one which contains glorious treasury coins or the 3000 one which contains a pretty generous offer of an origin artifact selection chest and also a bunch of treasure selection chests as well to improve your treasure train so if that's something you're interested in that is available as well for you to pick up. So a lot of stuff available here for you guys, and I really do think the Card Clash of Illusion is going to be a fantastic event, and hopefully it comes around every single month so that you guys can make the most out of your gems and your contract story gems. I do think it's way worth it using your gems to get more cards, and I think it's much better value than going after something like Imp's Adventure or Sky Labyrinth. So I do think this event is going to be absolutely incredible for you guys who are looking to get the most for your resources as free-to-play players. And even mid-tier spenders can enjoy this as well. I mean, anyone can. This event is just really, really good. And the Glorious Treasury is just giving us such a fantastic return of investment. These rewards are very strong. And the fact that you can pick up Stellar Shards and eventually Sublimation and Core Chests at a really cheap and easy price is just absolutely brilliant. And the fact that you can do that just with a few Contract Story Gems and Gems as a free-to-play player is brilliant. Should you go ahead and spend in the Moonlight Gift? Honestly, if you did want to get times two in the Starlight Melody, that's cool. That makes sense. You're also getting a ton of extra enchanted cards here as well, and some stellar shards thrown in on there. And you also get double rewards in the card Clash Illusion. Don't be fooled, though. It does specifically say in this top left corner that glorious treasure coins are not doubled and that might be a little trap for you guys you might get excited and think oh yeah i can double these uh, no you can't it's, it actually makes it questionable value in that sense however you are also picking up some good stuff from the moonlight gift you do get prism story gems there's also chests here there's normal gems there's cause of transcendence and then you also do of course get your times two bonus here for the Starlight Melody. That's 100 bucks this first tier. It also contains 10 Soul Symbols, which is quite nice. If you wanted to double that price point, you do get times four instead of times two. Another 50 enchanted cards with more Stellar Shards and more Crystals of Transcendence. I think that's okay as well. You're just doubling what you had from before. But then for some bizarre reason, it doubles again, but the bonus goes from X4 to X6. I've complained about this in the past. I don't know why DH games do this. Also, this isn't giving you any more enchanted cards. It's almost like they don't want us to spend 20,000 VIP XP because the only additional bonus here is an origin artifact selection chest 
2,000 Prism Star Gems and the times 6 multiplier. I, I don't really see that as appealing. It's only people who are going to mega max out the Starlight Melody that might see that as something worth doing. But really, in my personal opinion, I think that's just overstretching too much. Who the heck is going to spend 400 bucks this week? The rewards are so good, free to play. Why, why do you need to spend? Like, I don't get it. Um, so yeah, just enjoy the fact that we have a really good free to play event. Last week was an amazing free to play event. The week before that was an amazing free to play event. And look at next week. The Shishi Festival is here, which is Valentine's Day for those in China, and that is basically going to be an amazing event, giving us tons of rewards, and it's linked to Profit Orbs. One of the most frequently asked questions I get from players is, when should I use my Profit Orbs? Well, this is one of those times. This Shishi event is going to be amazing. It's going to give you such good rewards for your Profit Orbs, so hit that subscribe button if you want to figure out how to do that event next week and get some amazing rewards for you guys. Three weeks back-to-back, -back, and also also, potentially four weeks back to back, we have amazing free to play events. It is such a good time to be a free to play player in Idle Heroes right now. The rewards are incredible, the progress is fantastic, and the sheer volume of sublimation stuff that you guys can pick up and stellar shards is really, really good. So, hopefully, DH Games keeps up this trend and free to play players can continue to be showered with amazing rewards. I love it. Hopefully you love it. And let me know in the comment section down below how far into this event you're going. Hopefully you've got 6,000 gems saved up. And I don't even need to say hopefully you've got 600 contract story gems because the devs have already just given us 600 for free. How brilliant is that? Now you might want to spend some more contract story gems with value packs to push even deeper, but that's entirely up to you. You don't have to do that. But I don't think I'm ever going to go in on a gala on a free to play or budget account ever again. Not when this event exists. Either way, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Angel Legion. There's codes in the description if you want to get some extra rewards on your account. And as always, guys, have an amazing week. Join us next week for our next event update. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Until then, though, happy idling. Yeah.